more proof that the end is nigh. I had to look that up to make sure that nigh meant near, because it's not like I use that word all the time, right? But it's just a cool sounding word, and when you're talking about everything falling apart in the end of the world, nigh just kind of fits it, doesn't it? I was going to <clears throat> uh, make shoot one right now about fear, and uh, uh, it's just a waste of time. <clears throat> and I was also going to include in that uh, an explanation of why I still live in the suburbs, which I know is is interesting to some of you. And uh, and and something just came up that I just felt I had to talk about because it it just screams the end is nigh. Uh, oh, I should say, I just put one up over on Patreon. <clears throat> it is a Patreon only. Uh, it's, uh, it's about identifying the real enemy. Uh, I think a lot of people are not identifying the real enemy in the situations that are going on in here today. And the reason that I have it over on Patreon is that it's a lesson from the IRA, uh, not your retirement fund, the other one. Uh, and it's an important one if you all, and I, I've, I've seen that many people have been interested in the, in the, uh, the videos that I put up about uh, Ireland and the Troubles and the IRA and a little Irish history and stuff like that. And if you're at all interested in that, uh, I would suggest you, you go over there. Um, I feel funny about, you know, saying, hey, go over to Patreon. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just not used to it yet. Thank you all who have. I, I never would have believed I have this that I would have this many Patreon patrons over there. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's nice to have you over there. And the comments and the uh, the conversations over there are uh, are great. I really enjoy them. I've learned some things which I love. And uh, so for for those of you who uh, want to go a little bit deeper into this, and, and for those of you who don't. For whatever reason, uh, I, I fully understand, and that's great too. You know, we'll continue to have a, a, a good back and forth here. But uh, I, I am getting into deeper stuff over there, and if you want to be a part of it, I'd love to have you. So anyway, um, okay. So the end is nigh, and if you need any more proof of it, uh, here we go. Let me just read a couple of things. I was just scanning through Breitbart. As I do a couple of times a day to see what new idiocy is out there that I may have to deal with. And you know what? There always is new idiocy. So some of this is not necessarily, well, this first one is just kind of a recap, but it's important. It says, and this is out of Minneapolis, well, which I guess you'll see in a minute. It says, a bunch of white liberals in a Minneapolis, Minnesota neighborhood vowed to stop calling the police. And now there have been three sexual assaults. Big surprise. Last month, the left-wing activists who inhabit Powderhorn Park, a neighborhood not far from where George Floyd died while in custody of Minneapolis police, decided it was time to stop calling the police over property crimes, even after being carjacked by armed thugs. If you recall, the result was an immediate disaster. Within days, the local park was flooded with homeless people, some 300 of them, who turned what had been a nice place for kids to play or to walk your dog into an encampment where no one felt safe any longer to let their kids play or walk their dog. I'm not being judgmental, one woman told the far-left New York Times back in June, but she no longer allows her young children to play in the park. It's not personal. It's just not safe. You know, whenever somebody threatens my uh, safety, I take it personally. One Powderhorn resident was anguished over his panicked call to the police after being carjacked and vowed to never do it again. Been thinking more about it, he told the Times. I regret calling the police. It was my instinct, but I wished it hadn't been. I put those boys in, de in danger of death by calling the cops. A number of residents, for obvious reasons, said they no longer felt safe, not even in their own homes. Nevertheless, they vowed to reject involving the police. Instead, they would call social workers, such as the one who didn't answer when one Powderhorn resident found a former mental patient in his apartment elevator. Well, that was June. Three weeks have since passed, and June is now looking like the good old days in good old Powderhorn Park. 
that homeless encampment has grown from 300 to nearly 600. There have been also been three sexual assaults, one on June 26, just two days after the Times article ran, celebrating these anti-cop residents, and two more on June 28 and July 5. On top of this filthy encampment, what had been a nice family park not, now also has 24 portable toilets, 50 trash containers, and three hand-washing stations. Yahoo reported, the park board has also boosted maintenance staffing to support cleaning and assistance for food shelf services at an additional cost of $15,700 a week. Even the far-left Minnesota Star Tribune has been forced to describe the situation as a powder keg, where crime is escalating and good people are fleeing. It goes on a little bit. What in the world is wrong with you people up there? You... You used to be Vikings, didn't you? I say that because Kelly's family's from up there. Okay, all you good Norwegians and all that, you were you were supposed to be Vikings. I write about you in my fourth book as Vikings. Well, after the collapse that did away with everybody who refused to call the police, but they were probably already dead by then anyway, right? Uh, what in the world? Yeah, I used to love going to Minnesota. Uh, you're going to have to put a chain around me and drag me to get me there again. Uh, anyway, down at the bottom of here somewhere, and I won't take the time to try to find it, but down at the bottom, uh, the writer who I believe, is it Pollock? It's one of Breitbart's writers, head writers, I think. Let me give him, no, John Nolte. Okay, one of, one of Breitbart's head writers. Uh, down there in the body, he says, this is why there won't be... Uh, a, a defunding of police or a collapse of police. Really, John? Well, let me read you something else that appeared on Breitbart right beneath that. And this is just going to blow your mind. Let me scroll down. Sorry to take this time. This is this is a, my bigger laptop and it doesn't react as well as my little one. Okay, here we go. The police chief at West Virginia University was forced to apologize after students noticed a thin blue line American flag honoring police on display in his home, not out on a flagpole, but in his home during a Zoom video conference. The chief apologized to the community after acknowledging the hurt his flag caused. Now, before I continue on this and find out what this genius of law enforcement has to say for himself, I will say that I am not in favor, even though I'm former LEO, I am not in favor of the thin blue lying flag, okay? It's, uh, I, I don't like the American flag being tampered with, although, I, you know, because I look at the American flag what it used to stand for, not uh, what it too often flies over now, okay? But but still, I, you know, I, I am not... Uh, I'm not arguing with anybody who who wants to wear it, fly it, anything like that. I'm just, I think there are other ways to show our support for what we want to support or what we do or what we did or whatever. I'm just not a supporter of changing the American flag for these different types of things. That said, okay, not, not to offend anybody, right? Okay, according to a report by Campus Reform, West Virginia University Chief W.P. Chetister apologized last week in response to the outrage that erupted after students noticed a thin blue line American flag on display in Chetister's home during a video conference. The American flag with a blue stripe was created to honor police officers. Many students called on Chetister to resign in response to the students' outrage. In a tweet, the university announced that Chief Chetister wanted to apologize to the community for any pain that was caused by the flag. Pain! Ooh, pain! Can you believe? Pain! Hey, hey, uh, misfire a nail gun through your hand. See, see if, if uh, same thing? During our campus conversation today, UPD Chief W.P. Chetister had an American flag with a blue stripe on display. After hearing feedback from our community, he realized the hurt he had caused and has removed the flag, the university wrote in a tweet. You believe that? He removed the flag from his own home. Uh, let's see what the letter from, from Chief Chetister says. Can, can we? Let's see. 
Statement from Chief. Okay. I participated from my office, and on the wall behind me was an American flag with a blue stripe that I had been given as a gift. See, that, that's passing it off, right? I, I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it on my own because I'm not that kind of horrible person. It was given to me as a gift, not my fault, right? It kind of reminds you of Adam, doesn't it? Doesn't it? When, when God came down and says, Adam, have you eaten of that apple from the tree that I told you not to eat from, or the fruit of the tree that I told you not to eat from? And what did Adam say? He didn't say, oh, I'm sorry, Lord, it's my fault. I, he says, well, it was given to me by the woman that you gave me, right? Not my fault. What a world. This guy's a chief of police, which, to be honest, doesn't mean a lot sometimes. Anyway, it was given as a gift. For me personally, it has always represented a way to honor the commitment I made as a first responder to protect our community. I understand now that it represents something else to many others, something that I now know was traumatic to some of our community tuning in for our conversation. I sincerely did not have any intent to suggest that police lives matter more than any others. Now, I didn't, I didn't uh, quote that exactly. I left something out. I'll leave your imagination to fill that in. Nor did I intentionally, nor was I intentionally, trying to cause any harm or offense. Chief, you ought to resign. Not because you had that up. Because you're, you, you are, if, you know, if, if, if I used bad language on here, I'd use some of it now to describe you. Um. Uh, the end is nigh. You know why the end is nigh? Is because these are the morons who are going to stay. All over the country, police are under attack. The other day, I was going to make one on this anyway, but this is just, you know, it just fits in. It, 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 it makes me so mad, maybe I'll make another one anyway, but uh, I'm scouching down on my chair. Uh, uh, the other day, two cops somewhere or another, New York, New York was it? New York? Uh, arresting somebody. The guy started fighting. They had him in cuffs. I always wondered why people waited until they were in cuffs to start fighting. I mean, that's, that's stupid. Even if you got away, what are you going to do? Run around like a chicken with his hands cuffed? Um, but anyway, so the guy started fighting. They wouldn't let him put him in the car. And and out of the crowd some comes somebody and jumps on one of the cops, puts him in a headlock, drags him all over the street. Just later that same day, as a few days ago, uh, what was it? There was a drug raid down in Florida, I think. And uh, as the cops were coming out, a, a big crowd of 50 or more people surrounded the cops. Uh, you know, I'm not sure how many assaults, but but it was a it was a confrontational crowd. Now, occasionally we would have something like that, but but not to this extent for the most part. Uh, so what's happening is now we have police people actively attacking the police well you know what the good cops are going to leave not because they're afraid they're not most most good cops you know they don't mind a good dust up uh and i'll stop it right there but that's fine with them uh, but you know what when the when the community doesn't back them up more and more good cops are coming to the to the realization that hey uh, th this this is not what they signed up for. It's not worth it. Why should they be doing something like this? I put it in my book, I think, uh, one of my first books, why a couple of the characters left. And uh, it was the reason when people asked me why I left. I, I got tired of taking out the garbage for a society who doesn't care and is bent on creating more garbage. Okay, So uh, the good cops are going to leave. And then you're going to be left with these guys. These guys, a bunch of social workers and, and police chiefs who will apologize uh, because of something that he believes in, that, that uh, believes in, uh, that is uh, hanging on his wall in his own house. And you know what the, the, the bad thing is that? He's a chief of police, and he is responsible for the policies that come down to his, his department. I would hate to work for a person like that and so would any good cop so the end is nigh because 
these people are pretty soon going to get what they want, and that is a world without cops. And if they do have a little, bunch of little people jumping around in blue uniforms, they're not going to be real cops. They're going to be the people who didn't quit uh, when uh, because they didn't realize that uh, that they had a responsibility beyond not offending people. So, I guess you can tell that I had a little bit of feelings about this. But this is what's coming. And if it keeps going, and I have every reason to, to expect that it will, and it will get worse, uh, see at the bottom. Because it's not going to be much longer that we're going to be there, and then we're going to have to be fighting our way back up. But that's fine, isn't it? Maybe it had to happen. Okay. You all, remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. And I fully intend for my children and grandchildren to live in a world where they don't have to worry about dealing with idiots like this. How about you? I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.